let's start with today's topic, uh, which is, oh, sorry, there's a question. Have you covered already is electric yet? Uh, no. Yeah. And, yeah, and I wasn't planning to cover it as such, unless you really want to. So I would suggest that you you try to make sense of it from the coursework, and if uh, it doesn't make sense, ask in the labs. So yeah. I just wondered if it was cool if I could skip it and come back to ask uh, it. No, no, you can, you can get started with it. Yeah. Yep, good question. Uh, okay, so we'll start today, which is continuing yesterday. And I think, Connor, you, you can okay. take this off. Um, this is our... We do, we do plan these lectures. The plan is that Fred drops me in it and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm reading the instructions. Let's write a function which computes away if true and if false. So we notice, we think about our expression language. We could even look at our expression language. If I can remember how to work Fred's computer, I can still remember how to use Emacs the old way. Um, Here's our expression language. So you can notice that while we've got some interesting computation on numbers, we don't really have that much going on on the bits. OK, it's true. So we can make constant bits. And we can also compute bits by doing if then else with other bits. So if you think about this, it's kind of pointless to bother with a whole if then else if, uh, if the condition is always a constant bit. Um, I mean, yes, it's true, we can just evaluate this language to a final value. But if you imagine that we threw in other features like variables or something like that, where not all programs evaluated at compile time, you might still want to get rid of if then else's where it's clear which path you're going to take. So that's um, the optimization uh, we want to do do and the nice thing about our current setup is uh, that if you uh, you know the, the some important properties of of any kind of program transformation is that if your program made sense before the transformation it should still make sense after the transformation and your basic um, uh, the situation is that if you start from a well-typed program of type T and you transform it, it should you should end up with a well-typed program of type T. Uh, that's not the end of the story, but it's a good start. And it's a good start that we're going to get pretty much for free, I hope. So let's see what happens. Okay. So we're going, supposed to be so everyone clear what the game is. Uh, if we see an if then else where the condition is either constant true or constant false, we just want to squash the whole the if and just go with the branch that is indicated by the bit that's sitting there in the condition telling us which way we need to go. Okay. So, I mean, let's just see l follow our noses literally just see what's see what comes in. Change some names, num n, bit b, oops. Oop. Uh, I've done another screenshot. How can I just make that window go away like that? It's it happens every time that my my finger hits the function key instead of the control <laughs> key. <laughs> you have to delete all these screenshots later. <laughs> Yes, this would be a histogram at the end <laughs> of, of term as to how many screenshots there were in each lecture. I think you have to press the button as well, but you can do that next time. Um, you want to finish the renaming, maybe? Um, I could finish the renaming, yes. E, e prime. And then this is EB, ET, EF. Control X, Control S, <laughs> Control C, Control L. Okay, so if we get constants, there's nothing to fix. We just give back what came in. We could even do that with a catch all, actually. It's tempting. But um, 
And if we get uh, addition, then we're not going to do anything clever with the overall addition. We're just going to optimize the two sides of it. So that's query plus e query. Uh, and then I'm going to do minus L, control C, control A. I like the look of number three. I like the look of number two. So, yes. Here, notice what, why was that trick effective? I'll tell you. It's because, uh, well, not really, because there's, there's only so much we've got lying around. Okay, it could have well offered us some constant numbers. It could have said, yeah, you want to add, you want to add three and seven. Uh, but yeah, it was, I think it, it actually tries to make use of variables. It, it knows that if you've got some program variables, you probably don't want to throw them away. And it uses that to bias the uh, examples it comes up with. OK, so we have finally arrived at where the action is. So uh, we could just look at this thing to see if it's a constant true or a constant false. But we'd miss some opportunities. We'd so think about uh, maybe my condition is uh, if true, then false, if true. No, if, 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 if true, then false, else true. That could be a condition. Uh, and we'll think, and that's not currently a constant bit. But if we optimized first, it would turn into a constant bit. So, the in terms of the choreography, which thing do we do first? You know, we could uh, we could look at this thing, or we could optimize it and look at its optimal form. And we will win more often if we optimize it first. Does that make sense? Yeah. So look at it after we've tidied it. And to do that, of course, if you need to get yourself some intermediate thing that you want to do some computation on, that's exactly the job for with. So we say with reduce f e b. And then I pick a random name for the Thing that comes back because I'm going to pattern match on it anyway. Okay, so uh, we have an extra, oh, we have all the things we had before, but we have this extra z, which is definitely an expression of type bit. Let's come, let's come out of reduce if, so we're not interested in whether z is a constant bit. Okay, so we look at it. And indeed, uh, it might be a bit, or notionally, it might be an F still. I'm just going to call that EB prime. Oh, and then I'm going to take another screenshot because I have to think quite hard not to do that. Uh, right. So we've got. Uh, this case where we won, and this case where apparently we didn't win, we didn't manage to compress our expression down to a constant. Uh, so uh, we can worry about, um, well, some of you might be thinking, how could this ever, how could anything else ever happen? And if you're thinking that, that's a good thing to be thinking, and you should hold on to that thought. Yes. However, in this case, we are obviously winning, and we want to look at x and figure out which branch we're going to keep. 
OK. So if we manage to optimize our condition to being the constant false, then we should straightforwardly reduce if EF and not bother doing the whole if. So we've squashed ET out of existence. Thing many people who grew up in the 80s really wanted to do. Uh, sorry, old movie jokes. Uh, in the other case, um, uh, reduce. We, we, we know that our condition is definitely true, so we can throw away the false case and just optimize the true case. Okay, and then we're left with this. Yeah, just one comment. Yes. So, so this is another place where you have an opportunity to to not do as good as you could, right? Uh huh. And I've just screwed up. No, no, you haven't, you haven't screwed up, but yes. I could easily see myself screwing up by not taking the opportunity to optimize this branch, right? You could just return EF here, and it would still be type correct. It would just mean that you wouldn't optimize as much as you could again, right? So you would get a little bit of a, of a win because you've removed this if, but maybe you have more ifs inside this thing. Though. So you, you do want to continue reducing, but it's not obvious from the type that that you have to do this, right? So you, yeah. you've just done the right thing without thinking about it, which is good. But Well, I did think about it. Uh -huh. I mean, I could tell that oh, I, I didn't just want the old one, you know. If, um, if, if we just take stuff apart and hand it straight back without calling reduce if on it, then we're clearly not, not even trying to look for places where we could get a win. So, uh, uh, so it was clearly, to me anyway, the right thing. Yeah. to do. Now what to do here is interesting. Um, I'm going to see whether A Agda can guess the answer that I want. No, it can't. <laughs> so, um, but okay. So the deal here is that apparently we haven't been, we've, we've reduced our expression, but we haven't got it all the way down to a constant bit. So we've got no choice but to branch on it. Uh, although actually there are some amusing things we could do. Uh, so the, the, the non-paranoid thing to do here uh, um, is uh, to reconstruct the if with the reduced condition and then reduce the then branch and reduce the else branch. That's, that's what to do if you're instinctively cautious. If you're bold and dangerous, you just put in anything that type checks because this case can't happen. <laughs> okay, so that's <laughs> true now, but maybe maybe, maybe next week we extend this language and then, Indeed. then it wouldn't be right anymore. Indeed, right? yes, it becomes slightly harder to, to prove correct. Uh, okay, so there we go. Hopefully uh, that's... Uh, that's some stuff. Uh, what do you... I think I had that little test case. Yeah. Okay. So what was that? Uh, we had an example. Um, if you comment it in, you can click on it, or you can ask me to click on it. And then uh, you can see it. Well, I was just randomly going by hand. Typed expression, typed version of expression three. I think I probably ran past it, didn't I? Where was the example? Oh, maybe we didn't put it in this file. It's only in the polished lecture notes file. Ah, does that mean that uh, there's going to be a scope error any minute now? Looks that way. Yeah, not in scope. Um, okay. So if you go up and grab example three and just give it a new type. Um, copy is control. Well, it's meta W. <laughs> yeah. I know the old ways. Um, um, Put it here, I suppose. Right. It's uh, 
It's a text bar and its type, I suspect, is... Uh, it's like a number, except uh, you'll have to fill in example two as well. Ah, uh, goodness me, yes. But it does look like, if it's anything, it's a number. Yeah. What did we say that type was? Is it... What's the constructor? Num, capital N. Capital N, num. So... Now we've got... Yeah, that looks... Oh, like a... What's going on here, Fred? Ah, I don't know what that is. You've given me some junk. <laughs> uh, Let's just fix that and call it 42 instead. Um, uh, oh, and I've gone too far. So uh, I'll just comment this. So what, num42? Um, except, hang on a minute. That's not going to produce the right answer. Ah, okay. Better what be, do we actually want? It better be seven then, I guess, yeah. Um, well, we want um, that to be seven. Yeah. Right, now it's happy. So we managed to, we've just checked that it, it detected that they're false and picked that branch. Um, and, uh, but we could even then just gratuitously if e so how about that should have the same answer that's a complicated way of computing false but let's see if we still get it. And we do. So that's nice. Uh, but indeed, it, it's, um, uh, it's only a start. Uh, it, uh, uh, it's, it's a good start in the sense that we get for free that our optimizer is type preserving and non garbage generating. I mean, it's just like you know, I took your well typed program and I turned it into another well typed program with the same type. You know, is a hell of a lot better than I took your well typed program and maybe I just completely messed it up. Uh, but we would still like to know that the program we put in. The program that comes out does the same thing as the program we put in. That, that's clearly important in situations like this. Do you want me to do this? Or do you yeah, want to do maybe you do it. Right. Uh, oh, indeed. Uh, uh, oh, I'll just have to, to put do something it in, in, something in the gap. OK. Um, so I'll need to remember. OK, so what, let's figure out what we can state. Um, well, so we want to say um, reduce if uh, uh, preserves value, meaning. And what do we want to say uh, for all T if you give me an E in um textbook uh big t then we would like to say that if we so what was the evaluator called was it t, t about yeah like that or yeah like that um if we evaluate the reduced version hey i typed some unicode without asking uh <laughs> Uh, we get the same value that we would have got if we didn't reduce it first. Does that look like something we wish we would like? You know, looks like a, a good thing. Um, why did I give it such a long name? Uh, 
and we're in an absolutely typical situation where uh, uh, there ain't no choice. We're playing why is it stuck? In other words, in order to make the proof come out, uh, we are going to have to provoke the reduce F computation to follow the same structure that we used when we defined reduce F in the first place. And if you're thinking, goodness me, shouldn't there be some way to characterize that structure so that that high level move, follow the program structure, is what you do when you're uh, proving a theorem? The answer to your question, I think, is yes. But uh, uh, Agda doesn't offer us that modern convenience. So we're just going to have to pretend we don't know what the structure of the program is and rediscover it. Uh, so back at, you know, when we wrote reduce if we looked at E, so the proof had better look at E. And then traditional. Here we really do want to use absolutely the same names as we had before if we want to stay uh, with the program. Okay, so here's, we're hoping goal zero and goal one are nice and easy. And sure enough, since reduce if didn't do anything, then our equations are trivial. I'm not even going to look at that one. Okay. Um, so here, um, uh, we are, uh, we've got these things. Uh, so both sides of the equation look like something plus something. And uh, left of the pluses, we've got something that looks vulnerable to one induction hypothesis. And right of the pluses, we've got something that looks like it's vulnerable to another induction hypothesis. So there are various uh, stylistic options available here. Subscript to. Oh. How did I type that? Backslash. Backslash underscore two? Yep. All right, Kong2 says, if you've got a two input function, uh, then you can show that it respects a pair of equations. So if you know x is y and u is v, then you know f x u is f y v. So I did Kong2 of... Question mark, question mark. Plus, plus first, yes. and then question mark, question mark. Uh, we have, well, so it's one of those things, or plus e, you know, it's, no, it's just plus. Plus can't infer its arguments, of course. So we don't, there's, it's not completely structural. Uh, I wonder if I do control C, control A, will anything happen? No, that's amusing. And indeed annoying, because uh, I have to type reduce if reserves meaning. <laughs> but applied to E. Now that goes in the hole, and now I think the yellow goes away. Do I feel lucky? I do. Uh, so what was going on there? Um, right. Plus E is just syntax. It's a, so, um, it's a, it's a node in a syntax tree, whereas the plus function that we were working with in the goal was the actual function that adds up numbers. And, um, you know, you know that uh, 2 plus 5 is the same thing as 3 plus 4. They're both 7, even though 2 is not 3 and 4 is not 5. So that it's not, plus is under no obligation to respect equality in that way. But you also know that if you fix one input of plus and you know the output of plus, then the other input 
as at most one choice. So that was what happened when we when we when we filled in one of these by hand, we nailed down the problem enough that it was able to get the other one. Okay, but so so these are just the purely where, where, where the program just did purely structural stuff, we get a purely structural proof. Now the fun happens. This is the good bit. Okay. So uh, you can see uh, that what happens when a function defined with with computes. You get this thing in the goal here where you see after a pipe the extra the expression that was uh, appearing in the width. So you can't type this as as ordinary syntax, but it shows up in goals to say actually the thing that this goal is stuck on is reduce if eb. So there's a current and an occurrence of reduce if eb in the goal. So we ain't got much choice. We've got to follow the structure of the program. The program needed to know what happened when you applied reduce if to eb. So we need to know that too. So now, watch. So we need to do the same with. Um, so that's what we did before, yeah? We said, get, get this to the left in a place where I can look at it. Ah, watch what happens. EB prime is now standing for the result of reduce if uh, EB, but look at the goal. EB prime has been substituted into the, into the, the place where the width expression was. And this is the second magic power of width. Width not only uh, gives you the result of some useful intermediate computation, but if you've got a bunch of stuff in the context or a bunch of stuff in the goal that talks about the expression that you're interested in, uh, then width will also replace occurrences of that expression with the variable that stands for, that it brings into scope as the result of doing that computation. So it's not just that we were interested in this value, we were interested in simplifying the problem by abstracting the result of this expression as a variable. So width is actually doing something a hell of a lot more uh, interesting than happens in, in say Haskell with a case expression or something not just getting your hands on the value, it's simplifying the problem that you're working on by abstracting that expression. Okay, so the thing is though, if we're going to prove this goal, we definitely want to know something about the relationship between reduce if EB and EB prime, because on the left hand side of the goal, we've got an EB prime, and on the right hand side we've still got an EB, and I could uh, if preserved meaning I'm regretting. I'm just <laughs> just getting that in my kill ring. <laughs> so, right. So I'm going to need to use the induction hypothesis for EB at some point. But the induction hypothesis uh, includes a mention of reduce if EB. And that's the thing that we just got rid of. That's the thing that's supposed to be called EB prime. 
So our induction hypothesis, we've just accidentally made our induction hypothesis useless by doing this move. But there is a way to get out of it. Which is... It's in your kill ring already. It's in my... Well, I won't... Haha, ha, I actually don't want to... Don't want to destroy my kill ring, that's true. Um, FUB. Right. Now, watch very carefully what happened there. Um... The uh, um, we've still got our EB prime here, but now we have our induction hypothesis has been transformed again by getting rid of all of the occurrences of this thing in the type of that thing. So our induction hypothesis is now a useful statement about EB prime. It actually gives us half a chance. Uh, but we're not going to get any further at this stage if we don't actually look at what came back. Because that's what reduce F did, right? It looked at what came back. But I've lined things up so that so this often happens. Uh, if you're if you're doing a recursive call in a width, you're going to need to stack up uh, the uh, induction hypothesis in the same width, and then you'll get something sensible. The width allows you to add multiple new col columns, and it will look for occurrences of anything on further to the left in the types of stuff that's further to the right. So you can play this trick over and over again. Uh, and. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so now I want to look at EB prime because that's the only way we're going to make any progress. Okay, and uh, so here's bit uh, B. Let's knock off the happy path first. So you can see what happened here. You can see we're still pattern matching on something. We're going to need to look at B because the program did. I'm, I'm not making any moves that aren't just completely directed by what did we do in the program. We have to do the same stuff in the proof. We have to provoke the program to compute in order to do the proof. Right. Here we will have um, a uh, uh, um, a fun situation where I realise that uh, I'm going to need sim my time. Uh, I think. Yes. Well, I've got several choices. I I could play the game the same way, but I'm not going to. So yeah. So there's some style options here. Um, so you can see we've we've got our left hand side has collapsed to T eval reduce if EF, and I want to figure out how to cook, kick the right-hand side uh, into something that allows me to use the induction hypothesis for EF. Left-hand side's looking good. Um, we do control Y, EF, then, you know, match it up. You've got the same thing on the left. We've just got to bully the thing on the right into reducing. But we have a handy equation, namely this thing. So, um, so there's a couple of things I could do. I could do another with abstracting T eval EB and then pattern match on QB. Right. If I pattern match on, if I try and pattern match on QB, it will give us this classic error, which says, I'm too stupid to see whether Refl solves whether QB could be REFL because it, it involves uh, a, um, a stuck program. So you see, what's the equation? It's 
false equals T eval EB. It doesn't know how to squash this equation uh, because it's afraid to substitute. So the things it's willing to do are to compare constructors with constructors. Right? So if the constructors are different, then the equation is just false. If the constructors are the same, then component by component, the arguments have to match. It's also willing to replace a variable by anything. But neither of these things is a variable, and T of L is not a constructor. So this equation is just too hard. I mean, pragmatically, there could be many different EBs that when you evaluate them, turn into false, yes. right? It could be bit false, or it could be if true, then bit false, else bit false, or, or something like this. There's just many different things. So knowing this doesn't determine what EB could possibly be, right? So I guess in some sense, justified or not. So um, well, we can still use this information. Yeah. So there are two things we could do. Right. So one thing we could do, uh, since we're beginning to learn this trick, is we, we want, you know, we, we, you can see we're going to win. If this T of L E B were actually to be replaced by, um, uh, by false, then we'd be home. So we've got this equation. We want to use it there. Pattern matching on the equation won't work at the moment because we haven't got a, because T of L E B is not a variable. It's not a variable there. It's not a variable there. If we wanted to make it a variable, we could with it. So that's one option. Let's let. You could do one thing and the false. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Let's 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 show the variety. So we can say with uh, T of L, because you're allowed to, to build layers and layers of with, except then I'm going to have left-hand side issues, aren't I? Yeah. Um, but I can fix that. Um, uh, so um, um, right. And OK, at this point, the dot, dot, dot business is, uh, uh, has gone wrong. This is a gotcha to watch for. And the problem is that dot, dot, dot just means like steal the left hand side from the line before. It's kind of nastily syntactic. And now, although this one's OK, I've just screwed up the meaning of this one. So the recipe is. Um, to grab this thing, um, and park it there, I think. Is that the right thing in the right place? Uh, no, have I messed it up? Right, so what I do in this situation is I just replace all of the dot dot dots with the left hand side, and then I don't have to yeah. think about it. Okay. Uh, well, I got that in my kill ring. So let's just see. It's annoying that. Um, I think maybe what's going on here, you ah, need a little bit more of a left hand side. Right? Because you uh, need to keep the bit false. Yeah. And then. If I first got... till, then it should be a pipe. Yeah. No, what's oh, because there's uh, just replace the last dot 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 as well, and then you're um, right, yeah, so just spelling it out explicitly because that's the, the, the thing is that, um. I mean, the dirty secret is now coming out, actually, that although Haskell programs are lists of equations, once you throw with into the picture, uh, Agda programs are actually trees. So uh, uh, this, uh, this with uh, pertains only to this branch of, of the, you know, 
the part of the program where we have this pattern already. Uh, the other cool thing about WIS uh, is that because its action is to bring stuff to the left hand side for analysis. Uh, your, um, uh, the stuff that was already on the left hand side is still on the left hand side. So, whereas, you know, in Haskell, when you, you write a program, you do some pattern matching on the left hand side, and then somewhere on the right hand side, you do a case expression. And that case expression will allow you to look at the value of the scrutiny of the case expression, but then you're stuffed for looking at anything else. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, so now if we look at where we're at, you can see uh, that uh, we really wish VB was false. Uh, I mean, would actually be replaced by false. We've got QB in our hands. QB now has a constructor on the left and a variable on the right, so we can pattern match on it and get it substituted. So you'll notice here uh, that when um, uh, uh, QB is replaced by REFL, our goal becomes something that we really like. Uh, and, uh, and the result of this with expression becomes, remember, you see dot in a pattern, what that means is can't be anything else but. I'm no asking, I'm telling. So, uh, so that's false was the only thing possible. And now we've got uh, our, our if has computed away and we've got something that looks a hell of a lot like the induction hypothesis. So, uh, I think Otto can find this by now, right? Yes, let's hope so. No? No? Okay. Okay, so... Um, so you might think, yeah, hmm, that was, uh, to use an old-fashioned word, quite a palaver. Um, to say, oh, we, um, you know, we have an occurrence of one side of this equation somewhere, and we would uh, rather like the other side. Uh, so please abstract the thing that's on one side of the equation, then pattern match on the equation so that it gets replaced by the other. Um, and uh, you know, uh, you can you maybe imagine this might be a thing. Uh, that happens quite often. It's not unusual that if you have an equation and you have some goal that mentions the thing on one side of the equation, then you might prefer it to mention the thing on the other side. You know, what are equations for other than by turning what's on one side into what's on the other side? You know, this is, uh, this is why Leibniz was into them. <laughs> why Alcor Resmi was into them. Okay, so funnily enough, there's a thing that does that. Uh, so, um, um, uh, so what do I want? Actually, um, uh, I want, uh, so, um, let's grab QB. QB looks like a, an equation that would almost be useful if we could rewrite by it. We have a particular preference, um, uh, we want to replace this, this thing by that thing. Uh, so if you think of these equations as orientated from left to right, this one's inconveniently backwards because I didn't craft the goal craftily enough. Uh, so if I have uh, sim is what I need. Yep. If I use, so sim just fl flips a, an equation around. So this is now from left to right, a thing I'd like to rewrite by. So now I pick it up. Um, and then I use another magic keyword, to rewrite. And we're in position to deploy
the induction hypothesis. So what does rewrite do? Um, rewrite performs exactly the same strategy that we did here. You, you do with on one side of the equation, in this case the left-hand side of the equation, and then you pattern match on the proof of the equation uh, with reflexivity. And the um, left-hand side of the equation turns into the right-hand side of the equation, which is, gives us exactly what we wanted there. Um, so, OK. Um, uh, that was the fun bit, and now the miserable bit um, is that what happens in this spurious case. I see we're just about going to get this out. Yeah. Um, but there was quite a lot going on. So I want to normalize that goal because I want to see how, how so stuck it is. Normal as it gets. Yeah. OK. So I can see that. Um, uh, the induction hypothesis, well, actually, uh, I can see that QB is pretty helpful, to be honest. And it looks like the induction hypotheses are all fabulous. So... Let's start by rewriting with QB. Right, that's got us. I mean, uh, so the game here is always just like compare, uh, you know, what's different about the left hand side and the right hand side, and do we know anything that makes them more similar? So we, we're doing all right. Uh, and then the induction hypothesis she gets the rest of the way. So if I just go reading, oh, I wish I knew how to use your computer, but I do know how to use Emacs. So you can just stack up a pile of rewrites, just give a whole bunch of equations, and rewrite by everything at once. Would you look at that? Oh, yeah. Uh, so here it was, I mean, OK, so this shouldn't be terribly surprising, because what we did when we didn't get lucky was just to rewrite it, uh, was to just proceed structurally. So you see what's really happening here. Um, you know, it's result of recursive call, result of recursive call, result of recursive call. So you should not be at all surprised to find that the proof goes by induction hypothesis, induction hypothesis, induction hypothesis, because the induction hypothesis is actually good for saying that the recursive call did what it ought to do. So we have managed to prove uh, that uh, the, uh, well, let's always see, we're not saved. So let's, uh, Reload, no funny colors. Um, we managed to prove that our optimization uh, respected the, the semantics of our language. And we learned quite a lot in the process. Uh, we learned uh, that uh, with, as well as getting your hands on the value of some interesting expression, uh, simplifies the problem by abstracting that expression so that the variable that it gives you um, shows up in places in the goal and in the context. And then when you pattern match on the result that comes back, you introduce more opportunities for reduction in the problem. Um, we've seen uh, that uh, it's sometimes useful uh, well, there's this bit of a rigmarole where you have an equation that you can't just pattern match on, but if you uh, abstract one side of it using width, uh, you can then pattern match on the equation and one, one side will be replaced by the other side. But kind of this is such an important and intuitive, you know, what we do with it, what we've been doing with equations since high school, you know, rewriting by them 
uh, that that we've facilitated. So this uh, this pattern of using with is bottled in the in the rewrite functionality, and it's quite often. I mean, loads of proofs go on the left hand side. Do the same thing that the program did to take stuff apart, and then rewrite by the induction hypothesis. That's um, uh, that's one hundred percent. So there there are some boring theorems where that's that's the whole proof. <laughs> Just you know, same recursion as the program, rewrite by induction hypothesis. End of story. The only interesting examples are where that's not quite going to get you over the line. Um, but that's that's the basics. Um, so looks like a good place to stop. Yeah, I think so. Right. So if you look at the completed file, there are some other examples of optimizations, but I think maybe we move on next week and, and do something else. Uh, but yeah, let's finish it up.